release of an egg does not occur until mating triggers it. After gestation of two to four months, depending on the species, they give birth to one to eight young. Kittens and cubs are helpless at birth. At first, they can neither see nor hear, their life guided primarily by touch and smell. Amazingly, each has a preference for one particular nipple, which it locates by smell. In the wild, this efficient behavior frees the mother to resume hunting sooner. Excellent protective mothers, cats will quickly move their offspring if they suspect danger. To teach their young how to hunt and kill, many cat mothers bring home live prey for practice. These caracals, nicknamed desert lynx, may seem to be playful or cruel, but they are merely learning. Striking the prey stuns it, but the cubs are too inexperienced to deliver the fatal bite. Mothers keep their young fastidiously clean. The soothing sensation of tongue rubbing against fur is duplicated each time a human strokes a cat. In this way, a bond is formed, and cats come to regard us as surrogate mothers, a role we hold throughout their lives. In the wild, as young felines play, they refine the predatory skills essential to survival as adults. Whether domestic cats similarly practice stalking and hunting is subject to debate. Many experts feel that play exists as a behavior in its own right, simply because it's fun. cats, many owners can attest to a phenomenon affectionately called the evening crazies, when pent-up hunting instincts erupt into a frenzy. Triggered by a prey's movements, even the most well-fed cat may hunt, given the opportunity. But the connection between making a kill and eating it has to be learned. An inexperienced cat may attack with precision, yet not recognize its kill as food. As hunters that rely on stealth, cats are always alert for cues that could mean food or danger. While smell is not their primary sense, no odor escapes them. They use smell mainly to find the territorial boundaries of other cats, or to know if other cats have been in their territory.
To gather information about potential mates, cats use a second olfactory system in the roof of the mouth. Inhaling the airborne scent while curling the upper lip creates the grimacing look. Cats move their funnel-shaped ears to zero in on sounds. They probably have better acoustical discrimination than either dogs or humans. Often a cat can identify the faintest squeak or rustle within an inch or two of its exact location. The function of a cat's whiskers is not entirely understood. But if they are severed, the animal may lose its equilibrium and stumble into things. It may even be unable to make a clean kill. Whiskers also transmit information about captured prey. To remove all traces of food, cats regularly groom. Fastidiousness is one of their best-known traits. Coarse and abrasive like sandpaper, the tongue is covered with hook-like projections that can even tear flesh from bone after a kill. To writers, artists, and poets, cats' eyes have embodied all things magical and mysterious. The scientist knows that vision is one of the cat's most vital senses, the key to its success as a hunter. At Florida State University, the question of how cats see the world has been studied for more than 25 years. Professor of neuroscience and psychology, Dr. Mark Berkeley, defied cynics who told him the independent cat would never make a good laboratory subject. He designed a system that not only works, but actually appeals to the cat. Banking on the animal's inquisitiveness, Berkeley built a box that invites exploration. And when it responds correctly, the cat is rewarded with food. Generated by a computer, an image will appear in front of the cat on one side of the screen. The cat must tell the researchers, yes, I can see that. It does so by poking the right-hand plexiglass panel when the image appears on the right, and the other side when the image appears on the left. From the work of Berkeley and others, we know cats cannot distinguish between human faces, have poor color vision, and, like us, experience visual illusions. But perhaps most noteworthy is their ability to see at night. Under low light levels, um, the cat is uh, anywhere from six to ten times more sensitive. That is, um, at a light level where we perhaps couldn't see anything, uh, he still sees, not very well, but certainly better than, than we do. It's, it's, I suppose it might be the difference between a, a starless night and a moonlit night, uh, where under uh, the starless night, that might, might be the way it looks to us, but to the cat, it might look as if the moon were up. Able to pierce the darkness with vision at least six times more sensitive than our own, the night truly belongs to the cat. Its earliest ancestors probably hunted both on the ground and in the trees. To survive, they needed not only claws, but remarkable balance, an aptitude all cats retain to this day. 
In keeping with its reputation, the cat usually does land on all fours. And scientists have come to understand how. Slow motion photography reveals that cats always write themselves in a precise order. The head rotates first, based on messages from the eyes and inner ear. Then the spine twists and the rear quarters align. At the same time, the cat arches its back to reduce the force of impact. Despite its agility, the cat faces particular dangers in today's modern cities. Here, although hundreds of feet above the ground, the indoor cat is just as attracted by moving prey as is any other cat. If anything, it may be a stir-crazy bundle of energy. So many cats actually careen through unscreened windows that the phenomenon now has a name, high-rise syndrome. At the Animal Medical Center in New York City, doctors were perplexed when they found that victims of higher falls often had less severe injuries than those that fell a shorter distance. Good morning, Ms. Pisano. How are you today? Fine, thanks. Dr. Hello, Michael Garvey Harry. is medical director. Hello, Harry. Harry is recovering from serious fractures after falling just a few stories. Uh, a month since you were here last. We've been puzzled by the high-rise syndrome for a long time, uh, the name that we give for cats falling out of windows. Uh, our clinical impression is that cats that fall from uh, medium-level stories are hurt much worse than cats that fell from even greater distances. That seemed to defy our logic, that uh, cats that would fall farther would be hurt less. So we undertook a study to examine the records on cats that had been admitted here for falling out of windows. And uh, it actually confirmed that our clinical impression was correct. It seems that cats that fall from higher stories uh, have enough time to reach free fall like a parachutist and are relaxed. And when you experience trauma when you're relaxed, you will probably avoid injury uh, when you experience trauma, when you're very rigid and very tight, you will tend to maximize injury. The cat may not have nine lives, but its uncanny ability to sail through the air is almost certainly responsible for the myth. Throughout its history, myth and 